the body of the talk is where you're going to spend most of your time during the talk. That's the main course. That's what people are coming to see your talk for. You are making an argument about your data. You're, you're telling your story. You're showing your logical flow, how you got the data, the implications from that data, and where you're going next. Depending on how much time you have for your talk and how complicated your experiments are, uh, it is important to pick very wisely what you want to talk about. You don't want to try to speed through all of your data in a 10 minute talk. In a 30 to 45 minute talk, I'll probably spend a lot more time really making decisions about the order that I'm presenting the data. If I'm using a complicated technique, I'm really able to spend the time to break down that technique for my audience. One can structure their talk differently to get different messages across. If I'm presenting at a conference to a group of individuals um, who are within my area of expertise and might get into a lot of detail and depth. But say, uh, when I was presenting my job talk, I was trying to give an overview of the work that I've done rather than go too far in depth in, on any particular topic itself. What is the information that my audience is going to need to understand the relevance and the significance of the work that I am doing. The main purpose of giving a talk is to convey that information. And there are two primary means of doing that. You know, what you say and what you show on your slides. And those two really need to be in service of each other. Think about an illustrated book. You know, there are the words that amplify the story, and then there often are pictures. Some information in a talk is just better shown, like a data set, or like a certain bullet points to really make clear what the main topic of your talk is. For each individual slide, what you want is a main point, and that main point needs to relate to the core message. Other data, you know, which may have been relevant in my paper, but may not necessarily be required to understand my core message, that can go away. First, I like to talk about the experimental setup. You know, what are the methods that I used um, for the experiment um, that I'm about to show you? We took the coral mucus that was collected. We took the bacteria inside of that mucus. We took our fingerprinting technique, and we came up with a representative value. This way, we can compare and contrast the different communities in the different corals. The audience is, is, is then primed and ready to receive and interpret the data that I'm about to show them. Then I show them the data, and I try to do that in a very clear and accessible way. On the axes, you will notice they aren't your typical X and Y axes. Instead, these are variation axes. This means that the farther apart two points are, the more different the bacterial communities are, and the closer they are, the more similar they are. And then I talk about, okay, what did I learn from this data? Healthy corals are all alike, but every sick coral is sick in its own way. Finally, um, I like to end by talking about what are the future directions. If you do that for each supporting piece of data, it really does allow your audience to follow along um, your research story, to follow along what experiments you did and why, and how that led you to the next experiment. Just as much as we need to think about, like, am I making it too complicated? There also needs to be thinking about, am I taking too much out? Am I, am I simplifying it so much that actually the exciting science part is really kind of no longer present? And give your audience credit 
that um, they will be able to understand the data that you're going to present, even if it is a general audience. As long as you know you don't overcomplicate the figures, overcomplicate the explanation, you try to distill your message in a succinct and clear way.